The powerful new moon in Sagittarius on Sunday, December 1st, encourages us to question the truth and move slowly. Occurring in close proximity to Mercury retrograde, it reminds us that not everything we have grown to believe remains true as we get older. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. Thank you for being here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you want to show your support, please leave me a like, a comment, subscribe and press that notification bell. Watch more of my content or say thank you by buying me a tea or a coffee. Before we dive in, a big announcement. I am currently running a Black Friday sale. You can save 20% off readings with the coupon code 20 readings lowercase together or you can save 20 percent off products with the coupon code 20 numbers products lowercase letters check out my website it only lasts until it lasts for a week so you have about a week to take advantage of it and pick up a planner, pick up a candle. I highly, highly recommend my Jupiter in Taurus candle because we are currently in a year of Jupiter in the sign of its detriment, in the sign of Gemini. It is great in Gemini in terms of brainstorming new solutions and figuring out multiple solutions to the problem, but it sometimes makes it harder for us to feel optimistic, to see the light and to sort of see the purpose because there's just too much breakdown happening so jupiter in taurus is jupiter co-present with venus in taurus it's much better for creating coherence optimism hope finding success and confidence in your life i especially recommend this if you were born with jupiter in gemini or jupiter in virgo or jupiter in capricorn which are the signs of detriment and fall for jupiter with the sale, you can also save 20% on my 2025 planner. It contains 223 pages filled with insights, journaling prompts, journaling pages, new moon, full moon intention. I even included positive dates for love, challenging dates, lucky dates, so much more. You can find it here and it can be your trusted friend and companion through the year to come. So let's talk about the new moon in Sagittarius. So like I said, it occurs at, it occurs on December 1st if you are in the Eastern time zone. And if you are in Europe, then it's going to be in Europe or Asia. It's going to be December 1st for you. If you are on the West Coast in the US, because the time it happens is 1.21 a.m. Eastern time. So on the West Coast in Hawaii, it's still going to be it's still going to be November 30th. So adjust it for your time zone, but in the in Europe on the, you know, east coast of the US and 1 hour into the country it will be December 1st. It happens at 9 degrees 32 minutes Sagittarius, so especially strongly felt by people who have planets between 6 and 12 degrees Sagittarius, Gemini, Virgo and Pisces, so other mutable signs. The new moon is the time when the sun and moon come together. It suggests new beginnings. It suggests conception, new ideas, new opportunities, new experiences coming into your life. And Sagittarius is a Jupiter ruled sign. It is very growth oriented, optimistic, excited. Of course, because the ruler of this new moon is Jupiter in the sign of Gemini, it may offer you more than one perspective. It may suggest that you're exploring a multitude of possibilities or you're feeling a little bit confused somehow right like you're not quite aware of what you're trying to accomplish or you have a brilliant idea but you don't fully know how to implement it and that's where saturn comes in because this new moon actually squares saturn and then it also opposes jupiter so it activates the jupiter saturn square that we have had in august and we're having one more in late December. And so this new moon brings bring us, brings up the topics of the Jupiter-Saturn square. Somewhere in your chart, you have Jupiter. Somewhere you have Saturn. And the two are at odds with one another. Which means that somewhere in your life, you are 
very interested to grow. You're maybe excited to move in with your boyfriend, but you're limited by the lack of finances or you're limited by the responsibilities you have to your family who you live with. Or you're excited about new job opportunity, yet you are in the middle of taking care of your child who is sick and so you can't fully commit to the new job opportunity. So this new moon has this strong energy of new opportunities that are slow because Mercury is retrograde at the same time that are a little bit muddy and confusing and unclear and maybe <clears throat> maybe you are inspired but there's still a lot to work through right like Mercury retrograde suggests that you're going back and forth you're trying to gather all the details you're trying to find clarity the square to Saturn, the opposition to Jupiter might be a danger of like over expanding, taking on too much. There is also a separating trying to Mars and Leo. So you want to act. You have this abundant enthusiasm, right? But the square to Saturn does read as manage your expectations, be ready to work through roadblocks and do not sort of accept things at face value right because there is that element of confusion not knowing everything i'm also thinking of this new moon as some beliefs or some ideals that feel outdated we maybe don't feel as inspired by certain situations in our life right like the new beginning in a job might come out of a sense that this job no longer feels like the job you're meant to have, right? So sometimes the new beginnings that come out of this question, whether, you know, questioning your happiness, questioning your goals, questioning your beliefs and asking whether they still reflect who you are right now, right? Um, a lot of it is going on, like in the US, there is a lot going on politically, right? And so, people are having to sort of deal with the changes and the new reality and so of course you know for each of you this new moon can be like deeply personal but i think on a global scale too it's almost like the reality may be what we expected but it may be not what we expected and how can we deal with it how can we still make the best of it how can we take responsibility for the things that we can take responsibility and how can we have patience and grace and compassion to ourselves and to other people as we move forward right so it's you know it's an interesting it's an interesting new moon um the jupiter saturn square definitely reflect on mid-august what was that like for you do you remember any big developments do you remember any slowdowns any delays because this new moon doesn't say don't do it it just says be ready to compromise be ready to sacrifice be ready to commit be patient. <laughs> I know it's not it's not the most exciting energy one might expect or one might hope for from a new moon, but it doesn't mean that things will not happen. I just think there's a little bit of like red light that is happening. Red light that is occurring at the same time as this new moon. If you're curious to understand yourself better, you have questions about your chart, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I'd be happy to look at your natal chart, discuss your strengths, weaknesses, karmic purpose, natal potential. We can also do a relationship reading, talk about your compatibility or predictive reading. Like I said, I am currently running a Black Friday special. So visit my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com to save 20% off readings and products. Pick up a Jupiter and Taurus candle to help alleviate some of the Jupiter and Gemini stresses. And let's talk about the 12 rising signs, starting with the lovely Aries rising. For Aries risings, this new moon is occurring in the ninth house. And the moon in the ninth house is encouraging you to grow. You are feeling like you want to open your life up. You want to learn a foreign language. You want to go back to school. You want to meet new people. You feel ready for something. You're ready for a new chapter, right? And the ruler of this new moon is Jupiter in your third house. So there might be business opportunities you're exploring. There might be a move, new neighbors, new collaborations, new connections that you're making. There might be 
business. I feel like I've said it already. So business, new neighbors, a move, um, a new knowledge, school, right? The new, new beginnings in terms of gaining knowledge, taking exams. And so, so there's a lot that might be happening in your life. And so the new moon in the ninth is encouraging you to study a new language, to start a new collaboration, to start a writing project. However, the square to Saturn in the 12th suggests that there are some debts you have to pay, some sort of karmic garbage you have to throw out first. There might be inner doubts that you're dealing with where you feel excited about something but you are doubting your abilities you're doubting whether you have what it takes or you're quite literally not even doubting you're just telling yourself that you don't have what it takes so because it's saturn in the 12th house you are invited to work through the self-limiting beliefs and 12th house often represents your things that are outside of your control things that you're working through some kind of like past wounds connections you have with other people like you want to travel with the new moon in the ninth you want to travel you want to relocate to london and study astrology at a university of the uk i think there is an astrology university there but then saturn in the 12th house you have a mother that you're scared to leave alone and then maybe ask yourself okay but can do you have a sibling that can help you out can you find some help for your mother can you figure out a schedule in which you're maybe coming to visit her so like trying to be sort of thoughtful steady slow questioning your goals questioning your beliefs and thinking about the future are all highlight it here. As always, if you're looking for personal guidance, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Everything is currently 20% off for a week as part of a Black Friday sale, so check it out. If you are a Taurus rising, there's a new moon in your eighth house, which suggests new beginnings around money, other people's money coming your way. Maybe you're getting a loan a mortgage or you're signing a contract with an insurance company maybe you're getting car insurance there might be new beginnings in your partner's finances where they're changing jobs they're starting a new job there might be transformations around how you share how you relate how you connect to your partner and partner think romantic partner but it can also be your colleague that you're working on a project with or your business associate right or your accountant that you've had a very kind of like tight and close relationship and the ruler of this new moon is jupiter in the second house which suggests that you are very much on this path of financial abundance growth you're investing in yourself you're prioritizing learning and knowledge and kind of working on both financial but also emotional inner stability and so i think this new moon says that you will need to revisit your relationships with others because you don't exist in a vacuum you exist together with other people and so maybe something needs to change there, i can also see here that you're like working on some type of a project that involves your community that involves working with others, teaching, guiding, mentoring, leading something, and maybe you're encountering some type of restrictions, some kind of authority figures telling you no, roadblocks, challenges. And so this new moon is inviting you to work through difficulty to understand that you're not always going to be approved by everyone and things might be hard, but how can you where can you get resources who else can you talk to how can you ask for help if necessary right where can you cut back where do you need to pay off debts in order to get yourself more to that place of success and abundance if you're looking for personal guidance book a reading at anastasiadoesastrology.com my black friday sale is on it is active until december 2nd so take advantage save 20 percent off on readings and all of my products anastasiadoesastrology.com for the beautiful gemini rising there's a new moon in your seventh house which heralds new beginnings in relationships with the ruler being jupiter in your first and the moon also squaring saturn in your tenth it feels like 
you know, Jupiter in the first suggests deep personal changes, a start of a new cycle for you, where you are rediscovering yourself, you are getting ready to teach, to guide, to empower people, you're venturing on a fresh path where you have the power to uh, impact lives of others. Or you're changing your path, right? Maybe you're already a teacher, maybe you're already impacting lives of others, but something new is opening up, new opportunities. And the new moon in the seventh suggests that either these new opportunities involve your partner, let's say you're thinking of starting a business, a travel business, and you want to travel with your significant other. So the new moon in the seventh is like new beginnings in your life that involve the partner, or it might be new beginnings that involve starting a business, or there's also a change in your partner's life that then takes you and changes your life as well. Let's say your partner gets a new high paying job and you don't have to worry anymore about making ends meet because your life is now feeling so much more stable. There is a square to Saturn in the 10th with this new moon, which does suggest having to work through some kind of professional hardship. So maybe, yes, you know, maybe there are new beginnings or maybe there is a new business idea that you're exploring or even a new relationship, um, a marriage on the horizon, an engagement, right, pregnancy. But then the square to Saturn in the 10th says, says that there's still some heaviness and some karma in your job that you need to work through that maybe bosses, people in power are somehow restricting you and so you need to work through the difficult kind of situations. You know, you have to work through relationships with other people and find ways to uh, problem solve and overcome difficulty. So yeah, be ready that your professional sector may feel a little bit frustrating and maybe somehow affect like if we are talking about new beginning in a relationship or you're moving with your partner to a different state and then the square to Saturn is this kind of like realism where your job doesn't let you move and so you need to compromise, maybe postpone the move for a little bit, maybe quit your job, whatever it might be, wherever you are right now, but be ready to compromise and be ready to move slowly and maybe not have all the answers yet. Mercury is retrograde after all. If you're looking for personal guidance, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. My Black Friday sale is active until December 2nd, letting you save 20% off all of my readings and all of my products, and that includes my 2025 Astrology Planner and all of my candles. Pick up a Mercury and Gemini candle. It's the perfect one for you. For the beautiful Cancer rising, there's a new moon in your sixth house. It is ruled by Jupiter in the 12th and there's a square to Saturn in the 9th. So with Jupiter in the 12th, right, ruling this new moon, and it's in your 12th house an entire year, there is a chapter you're likely closing. There might be a desire you have to uh, finish something in your life, right? To maybe you're leaving a job, maybe you're thinking of moving, maybe you're getting out of a marriage and you're in the middle of a divorce proceeding, right? And the square to Saturn does suggest that there is some kind of heaviness involving legal matters, involving visas and applications and filing forms. And maybe if you are, you know, if we're talking about maybe like studying for something, the square to Saturn might represent that there is a lot of back and forth and you're getting negative feedback and you're just sort of somehow feeling restricted or blocked or limited. Things feel a little bit heavier than you would like. And so the new moon in your sixth house is actually encouraging you to control the things you can't control. It's a new beginning in your professional life. It's a new beginning in your everyday life. Sixth house can be very difficult sometimes. Sixth house is the place where we make doctor's appointments, where we take our kids to school and we do laundry, we do groceries, we, you know, battle it out in the mundane sort of realm. But it's all the things that need to be done. So I think with your big goals of moving or becoming a spiritual healer or upgrading your life somehow, there is this opportunity with a new moon in the sixth house to, like I said, control the things you can and maybe 
figure out a better flow through your life, maybe reflect on the clutter in your life, literal clutter around you. Maybe it's time to throw things out and clean space equals clean mind. Maybe it's the time to move through your schedule. Maybe it's the time to sit down and actually do that paperwork that is so frustrating to you. So it's, it's your opportunity here to create a schedule, to streamline everything, to commit to taking better care of your work or better care of your health as well, because this could be a lovely opportunity to let go of bad habits and commit to exercising, eating better, working more constructively, getting less distracted, let's say. I am currently doing a Black Friday sale. It's running until December 2nd, so you can save 20% off my readings and products on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Get yourself a year ahead reading. Find out what 2025 has in store for you. For the beautiful Leo rising, there's a new moon in the fifth house, and the ruler is Jupiter in the 11th, and there's a square to Saturn in the 8th. So Jupiter being the ruler of this new moon and it being in your 11th house for a whole year from late May until early June 2025 suggests that you are working on your involvement with other people. You are focusing on growing by helping others, by facilitating others' lives or guiding, leading, mentoring people, right? Or somehow your social network is expanding. You're becoming more involved on social media. Jupiter wants to connect with other people. And so the new moon in the fifth house is asking you what is fun and how can you unite this desire to connect with other people with your personal joy. It suggests that there may be more opportunities to do things that are fun for you, right? Like maybe you're thinking of becoming a life coach. <laughs> I'm totally stealing examples of my friends, but maybe you are, you know, maybe it's about being a life coach. Maybe it's about um, becoming a yoga teacher or a hiking instructor, or it's about new beginnings in your romantic life. Like you are trying to unite this desire for, you know, more involvement with friends and community with also personal development. And so the new moon in the fifth might inspire you to um, um, rediscover your fun, rediscover your pleasures, right? It might be suggesting that there are new beginnings in your partnerships, in your friendships. Maybe you're starting some kind of creative project and bringing others into the mix. It can also represent questions around children, right? Changes in the lives of your children or pregnancy or even talking about pregnancy with the new moon kind of a difficult aspect the new moon is making is a square to saturn in the eighth which suggests that your excitement your plans be that personal or professional or social right they might be delayed they might be restricted by the lack of resources they might be delayed by the fact that maybe you need to get education in order to get to where you're trying to go and so you have to deal with roadblocks involving that. There may be some debts you have to pay or situations where you and other people do not agree. So do not give up on your dreams. Do not give up on this desire to birth a child, social, personal, actual child. But be ready that things might take a little bit more time, more time than you'd like them to take for sure. Take advantage of my Black Friday sale. It's active until December 2nd, and you can now save 20% off my readings and my products on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. That includes everything, my planner and my candles. I highly recommend Sunlight in a Jar for any Leo rising because this is capturing Sun in Leo, Sun in rulership, and it has Leo on the Ascendant as well, so it matches you perfectly. If you are a beautiful Virgo rising, the new moon is activating your fourth house, which heralds new beginnings around home, family, comfort, and security. You may be moving with Mercury retrograde in the mix. Maybe you're moving back or you are taking on a different role within your family. You're hosting the first Thanksgiving, let's say, 
or your family also is going through a change, right? Maybe there is some kind of um, development where your child is starting school and so now you need to figure out how to get them to school, you need to deal with the logistics of packing breakfast, getting things ready for them, buying things, etc. I mean, it's November, I don't know who starts school in November, <laughs> but maybe in the future, right? In the next six months. Um, the ruler of this new moon is Jupiter in your 10th. So it does indicate that on this bigger level, you are professionally driven, you're growing your career, you're very kind of focused on outward achievement. And so maybe the changes in your family life are connected to that because you cannot, you know, your home life and your professional life are very much connected, especially if you have a big family or even if you, let's say, you know, let's say you help your parents um, buy groceries and you get them groceries every Thursday. And so with Jupiter in the 10th and you exploring a new job opportunity, maybe the job opportunity stops you from, maybe you're required to move or travel more. And so you need to figure out how to take care of family responsibilities without sacrificing professional goals. There's also a square to Saturn in the seventh, which suggests that maybe you're making some compromises, sacrifices, and having to balance your family life, your living situation with your partnership situation. Let's say, let's say you're getting married, right? But you have lived with your family and you have been helping them. And so there might be some kind of compromises that both your family and maybe your partner have to make. Like maybe it's about helping family but doing so less. Or maybe it's about family accepting that you're going to move out and still be close to them as much as you can. So definitely a lot of changes, maybe some kind of delays, right? There might also be delays, roadblocks disagreements you have to face when it comes to your relationships and partnerships. Yeah, and for some of you, maybe it's like literally, maybe you work in real estate and your partner is disagreeing with your desire to sell a house or something. And so you're having to navigate some kind of conflicts of values there. Take advantage of my Black Friday sale. It runs until December 2nd and you can save 20% off products and readings at anastasiadoesastrology.com. For the beautiful Libra rising, there's a new moon in your third house, which suggests new beginnings around your everyday life, your schedule, your ways of thinking, your communication, your transportation and technology. And, you know, thinking of Mercury being retrograde here and thinking of the ruler being Jupiter in the ninth, you have likely been questioning how to best do things, right? You maybe have been dealing with a bit of, you know, desire. Jupiter in the ninth is very much desire to grow, desire to travel, desire to write and publish, or just expand your life somehow. Take on more, do more interesting things that empower, guide, help other people. And so Mercury retrograding in the third, I think, is asking you, how can you handle it, right? Saturn is in the sixth, is in the mix as well, which suggests that your workload is heavy. You're maybe in the middle of dealing with health issues. You're maybe taking care of a sick parent. You're maybe, your workload maybe is just through the roof, right? Or you're trying to problem solve. And so the new moon in the third is like, okay, what can be streamlined? What is too much? What do you need to say no to? Maybe the new moon in the third is, talking to your sibling and agreeing that your sibling will, you know, pick up the phone when your mother calls and wants to talk because you don't have time right now. Now, don't neglect your mother, right? <laughs> Especially if you have a good relationship with them and, you know, it's a healthy relationship. But there might be some opportunities to rethink the logistics, to uh, maybe buy technology that can make your life better or declutter so that you have more freedom in your space. Literally, let's say you're thinking of becoming a yoga teacher, right? And maybe you need more space because your apartment is packed with stuff. This is not based on a particular <laughs> example, it totally is. Um, but yeah, so you know, so like, it's, it's like, how can you 
streamline things? How can you explore these new opportunities, these new desires, new ways of using your skills, your knowledge, a desire to start a business, desire to get more involved with community? Even if you're looking for a new job right now, right? Um, the new moon in the third could be like, okay, get strategic about it, write a to-do list, make a plan, start reaching out to people, check out who's in your network, know someone, but like deal with the confusion that might be represented by Mercury retrograde in a more strategic way and be patient because as much as you try, sometimes the retrograde time is just not the time to get the answers and you may need to wait a little bit. But yeah, do not you know, look for help, do not hesitate to ask other people for advice or guidance. Take advantage of my Black Friday sale, runs until December 2nd. You can save 20% off all of my readings and all of my products. The codes are down below and you can also find them on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the beautiful Scorpio rising, there's a new moon in your second house and you are experiencing changes around your priorities second house represents values something in your life is shifting um might involve getting married might involve starting a business might involve becoming a parent and as a result there is also likely changes in resources you have available to you or you know the priorities shift and the way you spend money shifts also <laughs> getting more comfortable so so you know, the new moon in the second might suggest that, like I said, you're looking for a new job or you're quitting a job because you no longer have time for it. Now you're a full-time parent. You need to take care of that. Or you're changing maybe the hours that you work because you want to focus on your business. So the ruler is Jupiter in the eighth and it definitely suggests growth in terms of your partnerships, changes in your relationships, new contracts, right? New agreements. And then there's also square to Saturn, which represents, and Saturn is in the fifth house, which represents compromises, sacrifices, hard decisions, commitment you're making to your romantic relationship, to your creative project, or to a child, right? Or maybe even some changes in the life of the child that take you away from things you're currently involved in. So I feel like, you know, I feel like this is the question of like, how do you need to adjust your spending how do you need to maybe invest money differently? How, you know, how do you need to change your life due to the fact that your priority is changing? Where is it required to make financial sacrifices maybe as you're trying to navigate the shifts that are happening in your life? And do not be afraid to um, compromise, right? Do not be afraid to take it slow and even ask for help because Jupiter in the eighth house does suggest that it is a good time to work with other people. So if you're not quite sure about the best way to use your resources, just look for a financial advisor. Ask someone to help you figure things out. If you're looking for more guidance, I am currently running a Black Friday sale. Save 20% off products and readings. You can find the information on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are the lovely Sagittarius rising, you are going through an identity shift as Mercury is retrograding in your first house of self, body, image, health, and the new moon highlights this sector of your chart as well. So. Jupiter, the ruler of the new moon, is in your seventh house. It has been in your seventh since late May and stays until June 2025, which suggests that there's a lot of focus right now on relationships, on partnerships, on other people, romantic relationships, but also maybe other kind of relationships, right? Business relationships, business partnerships. Like there is a lot of transformations. Your partner might be going through a change their family life is transforming, your business partner is experiencing changes. And so as a result, you are changing too. Let's say your job, your partner gets a job offer in a different state. And so you are moving, right? You're moving with them. And so changes in your life, changes to how you define yourself, changes to your perspectives and beliefs that are inspired by transformations in your partnerships are very much symbolic um, are very much si assigned to this new moon. 
There is a square to Saturn in the fourth, which does suggest that these new beginnings require some kind of compromises, sacrifices, hard decisions, difficult choices, a lot of attention involving home, family, and living situation. So perhaps you are moving, but you have, um, I have a client actually who's this example is based on, you know, like there is maybe some family heaviness that you have to address first and things are maybe not as easy. Or there can also be an opportunity to move in with your significant other, but maybe you're paying off a mortgage. Maybe you are handling, you know, certain like responsibilities or you have, you have kids from a previous marriage and you have to pay alimony, right? I think that's what it's called, child support. Yeah, so, so your life is changing, your relationships are transforming, but in the process, it's not always smooth and it does require a certain element of patience and compromise from you. So, so if you're feeling like you don't have all the answers yet, that's okay, Mercury is retrograde. I can also see this as maybe you letting go of old beliefs, kind of shedding an old image of yourself because you're healing childhood wounds and maybe because you're separating yourself from a family dynamic that doesn't feel healthy. Like let's say you are getting married, but your family doesn't approve of them and you are almost like, you know, venturing on your own and asserting your independence and choosing yourself. And so it's not necessarily easy, but it is crucial for your self-development. Please share how this resonates and take advantage of my Black Friday sale. It's active until December 2nd and you can save 20% off products and readings at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the lovely Capricorn rising, the new moon highlights your 12th house and the changes you're experiencing are of the spiritual, hidden, internal kind. The new moon in the 12th might represent letting go of bad habits. The ruler is Jupiter in the sixth. Maybe you're kicking a drinking habit. Maybe you've been drinking a bit much or you've been eating too much sugar or you've been sacrificing yourself and working too much, right? You've been saying yes to a colleague that would constantly bring you projects. So the new moon in the 12th might reflect a need to rethink your beliefs around self-worth, around work matters around your even even your beliefs around how much you know right there's a square to saturn in the third which does indicate that you are maybe feeling a bit heavy and feeling and like questioning your knowledge or you're studying your like your mind is a bit a bit like stern and serious and committed right now and so the new moon in sagittarius might be encouraging you to uh, accept what you know right and be okay with with your knowledge as is not sort of trying to push it and trying to figure out every single detail we are aware that you're very hard working as a capricorn rising the new one in the 12th might represent new projects it is very likely that you're committing to a creative project maybe committing to a healing healing of yourself starting therapy i can see for some or becoming a healer, choosing, you know, with, with Jupiter in the sixth and the square to Saturn in the third, you're deciding, you're like, okay, I've always wanted, wanted to be a therapist and I'm 40 and I'm going to do it anyways. I'm just going to go for it because that's the Sagittarian energy. Even when Mercury is retrograde here and things feel confusing, there are still opportunities to take advantage of the passion within you. So the new moon in the 12th shines light on these private, hidden, secret parts of yourself and both encourages you to let go what doesn't serve and bring forward things that do, things that are lighting the fire within you. If you want to take advantage of my Black Friday sale, it lasts until December 2nd and you can save 20% off all my readings, all my products. Um, the codes are down there or you can visit AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com and gift yourself with a present or pick one up for your family, right? Highly recommend my Jupiter and Taurus candle too if you feel like you're currently struggling with optimism. This, this falls in your fifth house of romance, pleasure, children, so it's extra fertile, extra abundant, and lovely. 
For the unique Aquarius rising, there's a new moon in your 11th house, which is all about new beginnings in your community. You're getting involved with others, you're helping people, you're volunteering, or you're meeting friends. You're maybe literally expanding your friendship circle. You're looking to meet people who are spiritual, who are broad-minded, who are optimistic, very Sagittarian. The ruler of this new moon is Jupiter in your fifth house. And so the new connections in your life might actually be coming from you becoming a parent. Maybe, you know, as a parent, you're meeting other parents and maybe you're getting all together to create better future for your kids. Let's not forget Aquarius is very socially minded, right? Or you're just hanging out with them and feeling seen and supported because you have similar goals. Um, you might also be meeting with the ruler Jupiter in the fifth house. Maybe you're exploring your interests like yoga, astrology, spirituality, hiking, and so new beginnings and friendships come out of you investing in those interests. Or you're also befriending your partner's friends because fifth house represents your romantic interests. I wonder too if there is something that is your pastime, your favorite pastime that you're considering turning into like a social media page or turning into a full-blown business, something like that is a possibility here. There is a bit of a Saturnian influence, forgive me, I'm going to talk about Saturn and money. Saturn is in your second house, has been for a while, you know, not news to you. But Saturn in the second does reflect that financially things may feel a little bit stagnant right now. There might be not enough free-flowing resources. There might be some, you know, some kind of money matters that you're addressing or even conflicts of values that you have to deal with where you are feeling a little bit more protective of your money and other people want to spend a lot and so you're having to navigate these tough conversations. You can also suggest that maybe a friend owes you and you need to bring that topic up. And so the new beginning in a friendship can also be coming from needing to be more honest or even asking for help, right? The new moon in the 11th could be like, I want to get this started, but I do not have money right now. Maybe I can ask my older brother for help or my longtime friend and see, you know, how can you make things happen? Please share how this resonates and take advantage of my Black Friday sale. It lasts until December 2nd and it saves you 20% off all of my readings and all of my products. Find it at anastasia.astrology.com. Now, if you are a beautiful Pisces rising, we've had Mercury retrograde in your 10th house and now there's a new moon in your 10th house. So something is shifting around your career. There are some kind of transformations, changes. Um, you're maybe feeling a little uncertain. You're maybe dealing with miscommunications, misunderstandings. You're maybe really driven to do work that makes you feel comfortable, secure. Uh, the ruler is Jupiter in the fourth and the goal might be to work from home a little bit more or to uh, do uh, work that involves home and family, right? Jupiter in the fourth might suggest that you're getting involved with family business or, or like you're prioritizing starting a family. Maybe you are starting a family, right? For others, it could be about, like I said, just feeling more at ease at a job. And so the new moon in your 10th house represents this opportunity to maybe rethink how you do work maybe set better boundaries, maybe rethink your schedule, right? If you feel like you've been working too hard, things have been overwhelming, there's a square to Saturn in your first house, so you're busy. There is a lot of weight on your shoulders. There's a lot of pressures right now uh, around your family, around health matters, and around your duties, responsibilities, even your relationships, because Saturn in the first is looking at your seventh, right? It's all connected. And so the new moon in the 10th is saying like, okay, when things are difficult and not everything is clear, what can you do to make it a little bit easier on yourself? What, maybe you need to talk to your boss. Maybe you need to start working from home once or twice a week. Maybe you need to switch jobs, right? Maybe this current job is not quite 
supportive of your goals or your bosses are not being understanding. Maybe you need to speak up for the fact that you need to take care of your health. It's all about some kind of you know, honesty and compromises, sacrifices, commitments and prioritizing because if you have too much going on, which quite likely you are, it's it's like everything is happening, nothing is happening type situation. So you're encouraged to uh, carefully consider things and start, of course, as always, Saturn will tell you in the first house, start with yourself. So start by taking care of yourself making sure you have time and energy to tend to your needs and then everything else will fall from that. But put the mask on yourself first before you help others. Take advantage of my Black Friday sale until December 2nd. Save 20% off products and readings on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com and treat yourself to the year ahead reading to find out what is coming up for you. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. It's exciting the year is almost over and we have quite a few slow transits coming up with mars going retrograde mercury retrograde do not expect too much out of the year so try to enjoy things being a little bit slow which actually could be great for some people and maybe difficult for others anyways thank you for being here i'll talk to you soon bye